New King James stuff here in just a minute. New King James is one of the ones that messes with the stuff I want to show you here. And somebody asked me about it and again, and I, I hadn't quite gotten to it, but we'll just get to it now, and then we'll get back on the uh, comparing the verses. These are important verses right here, and uh, something for you to, to, to pay close consideration to. I've already told you, look in 1 John chapter 4, Father, bless your word, and thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for the privilege of being at camp. I pray, God, that you'll uh, bless the youngins that were there. Thank you for the opportunity to be there. We'd ask now you be with us in the service today. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, 1 John chapter number 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And it is that the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. Now, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of God represents truth with true prophets. And the spirit of Antichrist is, is any lie and has false prophets. So one of the things that you want to watch for is any time they mess with a thing we call the deity of Christ or the humanity of Christ. That means that Jesus Christ was all God, but he was also all man. And any time you take away from that, they're saying that God did not manifest in the flesh. So that spirit is antichrist. It's not just a statement. It's not you walk up to somebody. There's somebody that doesn't live too far from here, and he'll walk up to you. You believe Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? And you're like, well, yeah, I believe he came in the flesh, you know. Oh, my God, you're demon-possessed. You're demon-possessed. You've got a demon. You don't believe he is coming in the flesh. Well, I don't believe he's here now. I believe he did come in the flesh. I believe he died according to his testimony, was buried according to his testimony, and raised again the third day. But he's not walking here now. He's not walking. Little Jesuses are not walking around now. He said, I have to ascend so that the comforter can come, Right? So it's a, it's a stupid thing to try to think that somebody's trying to use that in the present tense. If you look at the Luther 1545, which is the German Bible, they'll say is kommt, mean past tense. Is come in the flesh, has come in the flesh, past tense. He's not here in the flesh now, but it's important for you to believe that. Amen. He's not here in the flesh now, but it's important you believe he was here in the flesh. Amen. And that when he was here in the flesh, he was God in the flesh. Amen. I gave you the passage over there in 1 John chapter number 5 that says when they're talking about Jesus Christ the Son and then they refer to him as the true God. So anytime you pick up a Bible or you hear any preacher, there's a definitive marking about those individuals. And one of those things is for some reason they can't help themselves. And these are people that claim to be scholars. These are people that claim to be smart, claim to know all the original language. And I'm not knocking their intelligence. But what happens is there's something about them that all of a sudden they start taking things out of the Bible that anybody with any spiritual sense at all would say, well, we better not mess with that. That's God's name. That's the name of the Son of God, at which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That has something to do with His deity. That has to do with the virgin birth. That has to do with the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not just these and thous as I've tried to teach you. And this is one of the passages right here that every one of these Bibles want to mess with. Let me see if I can get where, uh, where they wrote this. In 1 John chapter number 5 and verse number 7. Now you'd have to back up and count the words here, but they lose the three, they lose the last uh, 15 words. Yeah, it comes up to the word record right there. For there are three that bear record. All right, well, what about in heaven? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, all of them are capitalized and all of them are personified, and these three are one. That's the Trinity. By taking that right out, at just that verse, I'm not even to verse number eight yet, but by taking that verse out right there, you've just messed with those four things right there. The deity of Christ, the humanity of Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, and the Trinity. Wouldn't you say those are important things? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Then, then I just read you the passage that if they don't believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that there's a spirit of Antichrist. Yeah. Well, there it is. In verse number 6, they give you the same thing about it. Verse number 6, he says, they came by the water and the blood, physical birth and spiritual blood, birth. Yeah. Two natures that he's talking about there. Even Jesus Christ, that's the humanity of Christ. And, by, and not by water only, but by water and blood. That's both births there. Water, physical birth, blood, spiritual birth. Are you born again by water? When he comes to Nicodemus in, in John chapter 3. By the way, good, good job raising, uh, leading that guy to the Lord yesterday. That's a blessing. 
Uh, anyhow, the, the, uh, you're, when Nicodemus, he comes to Nicodemus and he says to him, he said, uh, uh, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, what am I supposed to do? Pop back into my mother's womb and come back out again? I can't do that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a grown man now. Making a little bit of sense if you think about it. And he goes, no, I'm not talking about a physical birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. When you're born again, you're born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's your spiritual blood. You're purchased by his blood. Why would they take that out? That's important, wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, look in verse number 8. Remove the last nine words in verse number 8. Uh, you, you come all the way back up there to uh, the word earth. There are three that bear, record, or bear witness in earth. And then it has the spirit and the water, the blood, and these three agree in one. All right, let me break the verse down for you so you understand it. In verse number 6, there's water, blood, and spirit. That is dealing with all three parts. Verse number 7, Holy Ghost, Father, and Word, all three parts. <coughs> verse number 8, spirit, water, and blood. They're all different names for the same thing. They're all three in one, one in three. The one in the middle died for me. Amen. Amen. These three are one. You get that? It's called the Trinity. Uh, it's like the old preacher describes the Trinity like a, like a basketball. He says you have a, you have a basketball. When you have a basketball, uh, you have the outer part of the basketball like this. And then you have another part on the inside. I guess I could probably do it with a different color. You have another part on the inside, and that's usually like a bladder or an inner tube, right? That's what kind of holds it, like a leather basketball. So you've got a leather outside. And then on the inside, I'm about as good as I can draw. And then on the inside, you've got a, a rubber bladder that helps to hold it. And then in here, all through here, you've got air. So he'll say, you've got three basketballs, but you've got one. There's a basketball of air, there's a basketball that's a rubber bladder, and there's a basketball that's the outside. Obviously, the outside would represent a body. I know it's a bit juvenile for some of you Bible believers, but just, just bear with me if you would, please. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And then the inner side part of the thing right there, that'd be your soul. And then the air, the water, the, I mean the air, the wind, fancy word, pneuma, like a pneumatic drill, like Brother Matt uses an air-driven air uh, uh, tools there, to, you know, this, this the air uh, impact drills. Pneumatic drill, that's what that is. That's just the wind, that's just the breath. The air right there, that's the spirit. It's three parts. Um, it'd be like, it'd be like, uh, it'd be like this. It'd be like this. It'd be like, um, oh, let's say water. All right, with water, you can have it liquid. You can have it ice. You can have it steam. But it's still the same water. Amen. There are three parts. There are just different manifestations of them. So when it comes to this right here, you got the Father. That would represent the soul. No man has seen uh, God at any time. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So the old preacher says, you know, nobody has seen David Peacock at any time, but if you've seen me, you've seen David Peacock, you'd think I'd lost my mind. But the fact is, is I'm on the inside looking out at you. Amen. Yeah. We're bad about it because we happen to, most of us are Japheth and Ham, and because of that, we think we are our bodies. Right. You're not your body. Right. You're, you're on the inside. The real you's on the inside. When you pop off, when you die, when you kick the bucket, when they plant you with a shovel, whatever you want to say, when you pass away, when you're deceased, when you leave this world, all the things that they do to clean it up. I don't like death at all. It's just, it's just a, it ain't pretty any way you cut it. But at anyhow, whenever you, whenever you die, whenever you've passed on and so on and so forth, your body stays here. The spirit returns to God. The soul goes to heaven or hell. A lost man's spirit, that's the spark of life, the air that comes from God, that goes back to heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. Saved man's spirit returns to God. Jesus on the cross, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Spirit, <whistles> spirit goes back to God. Body goes in a hole in the ground, and soul goes down into hell, preaches to the prisoners over there, comes out on the other side, crosses the great gold fix, unlocks the gate, walks in, says, hey boys, how you doing? Three days from now is going to be a jailbreak, and, 
out he goes. That's what happens. He breaks him out of jail. Led captivity captive. You're getting out of here. And they would say, well, has the atonement been made? You've been looking for a lamb. You've been, yeah, you put up lambs. You put up rams. You put up heap goats. You did works. You did all this other stuff. But all that stuff, it's impossible. The blood of bulls and goats take away sin. Um, so behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So Jesus Christ steps on the scene, and when he steps on the scene, he said, y'all were here in a sense on a credit card, and I just paid your, your payment. And now the payment's paid in full. And if you're lost today, then you're a fool not to take the payment. It's been paid for. All right, so, so then when it comes over here, he's also all man. He's got a body and a soul and a spirit. So there's six natures. All this thing takes place in those verses that they take care of. Six witnesses, not only to the deity but also to the humanity of Christ. Tied in with that thing of making sure you understand when Jesus Christ came here, the Jews still believes their Messiah has yet to return. They rejected that. And as a result, you get in. Look in Isaiah chapter number 9. Isaiah chapter number 9. I have to look this one. I, can't rem I couldn't remember the, the verse, but it'll say something along the lines of, to, you know, a son is given and a, a, a child is born. <coughs> Somebody finds that. I, I know it's in Isaiah 9, but I... All right, Isaiah 9, 6. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Appreciate that. All right. Now these things are important. That's it. 9, 6. Thank you. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of course, they take some of those things out, but that's not my point of showing you that. Isaiah chapter number 9 and verse number 6. And I only write this down here for you. You might want to consider writing it down. You say, why? It's a good place for you to check. Because now they've gotten real slick and they'll give you words that kind of look like they might possibly have the same meaning. You don't understand that what they have to do is, is find things called synonyms. Do you know what synonyms are? A few of you know what synonyms are. Let me tell you what a synonym is. A synonym is, is a word that has a similar to or, or like the same meaning. But it's not the same meaning, and the further you remove yourself from the word, the less impact the word has, and it kind of gets a little bit dingy, and the next thing you know, it's kind of a little shady, and then it's kind of like, it don't even sound like the same word at all. But what they do is, and the reason they do that is, is because of publishers' rights, authors' rights. Your King James text, not your uh, other, uh, uh, your, your notes in there, and not your cross-references, just the text itself has no copyright on it. Now, does that sound like something God would do? Right. Yeah. Why would he give his word and then say, you've got to pay to get it? Right. Well, he wouldn't do that. Right. So, but what they do is, is somebody's already printed a word that has already taken the place there, and they've already wiped out all the original, 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 or just a fancy way of saying, if they're using Old Testament stuff, they'll give you the trilateral meaning of a Hebrew word, which means at the root of one word can be three bases for it coming from, and then they can choose a synonym off of one of those three words. If you don't get the right words, you completely miss what the word is altogether. Right. Because the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus text will tell you that that root word is one thing, and then other texts will tell you another thing, and the King James text will tell you something else. So now you're just up to decide. Spend the wheel, let the lottery fall where it falls, let the little ball fall on whatever number it falls in, holler bingo, whatever you want to, and say, I think I'll pick this one. Once you pick that word, then what you have to do is, is do, do your research to see if anybody else who has published another Bible has used that word, and if so, that word is now copyrighted and cannot be used by you without you giving them proper credit for it and so on and so forth, in notes, but notes, you know how all that works, right? right? So when they find out that's been done, now they gotta go to another word, go to another word, and find a word that hasn't been used yet. So don't believe the lie when they tell you that this is closest to the originals and so on and so forth. Well, then how come you're worried about the copyright being on it? Amen. And when you Amen. can't get Amen. permission to use the copyrighted text, you copy their text. Amen. New American Standard, Living Bible, uh, RSV, ASV, all of those Bibles, they go in there. And in a lot of places, as I've already showed you in the last week or so, the New King James can't get the permission to do it and just copies their text. Now, why would you do that? We already know that text is corrupt. 
So in Isaiah chapter number 9, he says to you something of great importance for you to understand. And that is, is that this is a testimony of the deity of Christ and of his trinity and about the blood of Jesus Christ and about the, the physical birth of Jesus Christ as well as the natural birth of Jesus Christ. I mean, the, the spiritual birth of Jesus Christ. Well, there's the stuff on that particular right there. That's in 1 John chapter number 5 and verse number 6. They have a new Bible out now. It's, uh, it's another one of them electronic things. I don't keep warning you about this stuff. You don't realize how dangerous it is. And you may not be as up to date. And you may think I'm just an old stick in the mud and just talking like an old stupid country preacher. But I'm going to tell you something. That, that, uh, that virtual world is a very dangerous thing that you're getting in there. I talked to the kids a little bit about it. I'm doing quite a bit of research on it. And I, I'm learning a lot of things about it. But here's the thing they're doing. They have a new Bible now. When you're reading through the Bible, that what you do is, is you type in what, what you like that verse to mean. And then they go out there and research and they find a, a Bible version that has a verse in there. And you get to pick which Bible version that you like on that particular verse. After you do that on so many verses, it begins to pick up on how you like for it to be said and how you like for it to be written. And, they, and, it's, and this is how they advertise it. It's a Bible made just for you. So, it, it, so now there's no longer an absolute authority. There's no longer a right and a wrong. It's how did you interpret it? Well, what I like about the Bible is, is God doesn't care about my opinion at all. God writes the Bible in such a fashion that he says, I don't really care what you think. I'm going to tell you what the absolute truth is. But now what's happening is, is that thing is uh, coming around where you now become your own uh, interpreter of Scripture. And ultimately what happens is it leads to self-worship. And you become God. Yeah, amen. You become your own God. You write your own Bible. You write your own how it ought to be. Well, I believe the Lord did make Adam and Steve, and I think that it's okay for that union to be. Oh, you like that rendering? Good. Let's pick up the new version and let's make it a non-gender specific Bible. And let's turn God into, a, if we're uh, uh, into uh, uh, women's rights and so on and so forth, let's turn God into a she instead of a he. Because all we need to do is, is change where the anti-peanote accent mark comes down and then we change that, uh, that masculine form into a feminine form. A little trick of the trade. And then so what you do is, is you change that and you say, well, you know, I think it's right. Hey, I didn't write the Bible, ma'am, and I didn't even put in to be a man. I'm glad I am a man. Yeah, right, yeah. I wouldn't want to have to do what y'all do, picking up after us and cleaning up after us and having babies and stuff. Like, I wouldn't want nothing to do with that. I'm glad God made me a man. Amen. You know, I think he made me a man. He figured I couldn't handle being a woman. I'd have probably blown my brains out, <laughs> especially if it came time for menopause to come around. <laughs> I couldn't have handled it, man. I'd have been throwing off blankets and, you know, burning up air conditioning units and stuff like that and then turning the heat on, heat and air, heat and air, heat and air, heat and air. I feel for you. Now listen, these babies, you know, they get ready. The babies are coming into the world and women are screaming and that kind of stuff. You've got to give them kind of a pass when, during that time. Strange some of the things they'll say. You just, have to, you just have to just, you know, thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, you know. And I think of my stuff, buddy, that thing, she's walking through the valley of the shadow of death there. And if I was in that much pain, I don't know how, what I'd be hollering. All right, amen. You know, and then, and then it turns from unsheeted hell to, you know, an unbelievable love when that baby jumps up there and on the mama the first time. And the mama's going, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this great? And I'm still thinking, my goodness, man. <laughs> God, help me. So I, so, but, but, but the Bible, God is a male. Amen. His son is male, Amen. and the Holy Spirit is male. Amen. It's never non-gender specific. Well, preacher, now in Romans chapter number 8, the word itself is used. Yes, it is, and it's correct in the English because it's referring to the work of the Holy Spirit, not the person of the Holy right. Spirit. Amen. You don't have to have more than about a, I don't know, maybe eighth grade education to know that. But you don't even have to have an education to know that. You just say, well, God's male, and it says itself there. I don't know what it is, but don't matter to me. I still know he's a man. The, man. Right. Amen. the very idea. Now, now think about this. Now let me show you where this thing right here goes. This thing goes to a real dangerous thing right now. I just talked to a preacher the other day, and I think I told you this. And they called him up, and they asked him. They said, we'd like for you to come. You're uh, being a candidate for our church. And he said, okay, be glad to. I'm looking for a church. And 
praying God will use me. So he comes over there. Two churches, the last two he went to. He got through preaching, preached a good sermon and so on and so forth. The folks liked him and that kind of a deal. They take him back in the back room right there and get the pulpit committee around him, which is the way that a lot of people do that. And they get the pulpit committee around and they get to ask him questions. First question, what do you think about women deacons? First Timothy, turn over there. Well, the Bible says. What do you think about women preachers? First Timothy, well, here's what the Bible says. No further questions needed. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. We'll not call you. You say, why? Somebody's putting pressure right there for a woman to take over something God says not to do. Right. Now, are you going to go by the Bible or not? I'm not using that to put you down. You believe the truth or not? Amen. Women preachers, you think that's right or not? What are you squeamish about? Right. What's the matter? Are you afraid your wife's going to be upset with you for saying you're not supposed to preach? No, Lady, if you want to preach, preach at the house. You don't preach in a pulpit. Amen. Even if you do sound like a man. Amen. I know you get upset about that. You should laugh about it. You should think about the audacity of that. You say, well, what else does it undermine? All right, then undermine that in the church. Now you just undermine the home. The husband is the head. Amen. Am I right or not? Amen. Lady, you want the responsibility for that? Why would you? He gets blamed for everything that goes wrong in his household, even if it's your fault. The Lord looks at him and says, why don't you teach her better? When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. Your wife's not rejoicing and she's not doing right and your kids aren't in order. Well, maybe it's because you're a jerk. Maybe it's because you're lazy. Maybe it's because you're a sorry man. Well, how come you get now? You get, you're all for this lady stuff. How about you? You know, in the name of Jesus. I get wore out with these guys walking around their Bible in their hand, kind of got their nose up over there so far. If it rained, they drowned. And, you know, they're walking around. And here's their kid coming. She's got diaper bags and baby bottles and carrying Bibles and grabbing the kids and trying to pull her skirt down and trying to do this. You know, and he's... Like that, and she's coming in there, and he's like, and can't you catch up? Get the kids over there. They're running across the street over there. You need to get on to so-and-so. You need to do such and such. And the Bible says, <laughs> why don't you help her out? Amen. Why don't you love your wife as Christ loved the church Amen. and gave yourself Amen. for it? Yeah. That's not effeminate. That's being a good husband. Amen. Amen. You get wore out with that stuff. You think that's being spiritual. That's not being spiritual. That's why a lot of the women are upset, because you men don't know anything about being a man. Right. What do you know about the Bible? Well, preacher, that's your job. Really? You sure about that? Aren't you supposed to be the spiritual head of your household? Right. Well, why aren't you? Preacher, i got too much else to do. Okay, good. If you're working 20 hours a day, I'll give you a pass. Tell me you've got too much to do and you're sitting there watching television six, seven, eight hours a day, playing on your computer. Face planting people you have no business talking to. Amen. Amen. I had some kids tell me at camp this week that they got men that are 50 and 60 years old, uh, 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 face face that doing that thing with a face book and them thing, and they're 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 friends with 50 and 60 year old people. They're teenagers. There's something wrong with that. Amen. What would you think if your pastor, even if it was people in this church, was communicating with your 15-year-old daughter, and I'm a nearly a 60-year-old man? If you're a dad, that should make your ears turn red, and you should say, Preacher, there's just something about right that don't set right. If you need to talk to my daughter, let me know, and if she wants to talk to you, you can talk to her in here. But you don't need to be Amen. in my day. A man wouldn't, a 50-year-old man wouldn't think of picking up the phone and calling a teenager. Amen. We call that a pervert. Amen. I don't know what y'all call them nowadays. Acceptable behavior. Well, why are you getting squeamish about no, that? What you, your, the look on your face is like horror. That's the wrong look. That's wrong. Amen. Well, you know, they're not just... What does a 50-year-old man and a 15-year-old girl have in common? Amen. I'll tell you. It'll regret all the way down to the lowest common denominator, buddy. Amen. You ain't fooling me with that stuff. Amen. That's foolish. Well, I, you know, I just hope they're helping them. Then bring them to an office and sit them down where you can monitor what's going on. Do you realize that in the school system, that's strictly forbidden? 
and you don't sure. think nothing of it, Amen. I'd be checking up who my kids' parents or friends are, whatever that junk is. I don't even know all of that, that kind of stuff. What do they talk? What do you do when you ain't got nothing to say? You make up a bunch of dung. Bible word. That's what you do. You make it up. Amen. You're just thinking of something to say. I don't know how I got on that, but <laughs> what does that have to do with I have no idea. Let's get back to the Bible here. Oh, I know what I was saying. It's the spiritual stuff. The spiritual stuff. I had to tell some kids. I've known some of these kids since they were little, little bitty things. Little bitty things. And I had to tell a come mom they came up to, you know, kind of give the preacher a hug kind of thing. And I said, you're, you're grown now. You're a grown woman now. You can't, can't uh, you, you know, well, but, but we've not, you, you can't, uh, you can't do that. It don't look right. right man, brother. You say, well, but preacher, you know, they don't mean, I, it don't look, it ain't right. Amen. It ain't right. They're grown now. You might still see them as a little kid. They're grown. Right. I love them to death, but, I, but you, you, can't, you can't be doing, somewhere you've got to say, okay, you've got to realize something, child. You get older, men don't think like they used to think. You have to learn there's a line. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 That's basic common sense. You think some of you know that. Are you that hard up? You've got to talk to teenagers? What's wrong with you? How come some of you men are looking at the ground and feel like you're going to puke now? Amen. Why don't you quit it? Or you think you are? You, you're, are you there rock of Gibraltar? You think they're depending on you? Is your life so weak you have to depend on your communication with teenagers? What is that? I don't even allow Brother Sam. He's been here for 13 or 14 years now. I don't allow Brother Sam to communicate with your kids without your permission. And when it is, it's simply about having a meeting or something going on here or something going on there. And so far, at least to the best of my knowledge, I have no reason or no evidence that he's done otherwise. Anytime somebody wants to talk, he says, I'll be glad to go with you. We'll go talk to the preacher. To the best of my knowledge, he's never been alone with a single one of them by himself over there or anything like that to try to talk to them about whatever their problems are. Right. You say what? Right. The ministry's at risk. I guess some might be new that. You say, what is that? That's that virtual world stuff. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this, what that thing looks like. That thing looks like, look in your Bible in Psalm 119. I don't know what it is. It just tripped my trigger. Something just stinking made me upset. Probably I'm tired. He said, well, preacher, you preach 12 times in six days. You know, you're probably wore out and tired and all that kind of... I am wore out and tired, but I ain't that wore out. That's right. Look at, uh, look at Psalms chapter 119. Look at the heading over, the, over verse number 41. You see that word uh, vow, it's called V-A-U. In English, that word is this. That letter is this. That's, a, that's an alphabetic letter in Hebrew. That's their alphabet. You understand? So the whole the letter is called vow, like you call this W. That's what that means. In Hebrew, that would be vow, vow, vow. The numerical value for that would be this. So, oh God, here we go. Well, shut up a minute and let me teach you something, okay? Can you explain to me how come of all the letters they could have used, they used a W? That's right. Can you explain? Why do they make it AAA? Why would you go to, why not ZZZ or DDD? Why would when the World Wide Web go out, would it be the equivalent of that, and it'd be that? I'll go ahead and give you a speculation. I think you keep messing around with that stuff and messing around with that stuff, and you become an altered state, an altered personality, right. and you go out there and you get people out there in the world that don't know you or nothing about you, and you start trading off things about who you wish you were and who you think people think you are and all the lies you tell on that thing. Right. And by the way, all lies come from the devil. He's Amen. the father of lies. Amen. All lies. Amen. Big ones, little ones, thin ones, skinny ones, fat ones, white ones, black, they all come from him. Amen. He's the father right. of lies. Truth comes from Jesus. Yes, Sanctify them with truth. Thy word is truth. Another place the Holy Spirit's called truth. Another place Jesus Christ is called truth, truth, truth. All right, so what happens is that keeps going on. 
It looks like, I'm not finished with the research, it looks like that you go over there and you open up avenues or highways. And it looks like that there's an ability of a spirit world to get behind that stuff and maybe use that as access to come through into this world. Who happens to be the prince of the power of the air? All this virtual stuff and all this hologram stuff and all this stuff going on and you don't know whether or not it's real or not. You've got all these signals running through here all the time and television and radio and, and computer stuff running through here and you sit down with that stuff and all of a sudden stuff's popping up and popping up and popping up and popping up and it has to do with something like elect electricity, electronics. You've got all this texting stuff going on now. People can't talk face to face anymore. You say, what are they doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. They're making a God out of themselves is what they're right. doing. That's, right. That's self-worship. That's you creating an image. Yeah. There's one step after he gets you where you start worshiping yourself. There's one more step to get, him, to get you to follow that image, which will be him in the tribulation period. He's setting the world up. That's right. Amen. He's getting everything Amen. ready. Yeah. You see, what's he Amen. doing? He's using his super highway to do it. I just suggest you be careful with that. Amen. Amen. Well, preacher, you know, uh, I know, I know. My question to you would be, why would you automatically be defensive about it? Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Why wouldn't you look at it and say, you know what, that's right. I do need to be careful with that yeah. stuff. I appreciate that's the right. warning. That's Amen. a good thing. I'll, I'll think about that next time before I start right. getting out there and looking places I shouldn't look and doing things. I, 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 I'll think about that. Right. They'll get you where you live in your own virtual world and you never have to leave the house and you connect with the rest of the world. Yeah. That's spiritual. I don't care what you call it. Right. Right. Question. Do you believe in a place you've never been? Yeah. You think it's there? Yeah. Streets of gold, walls of jasper, yeah. gates of pearl. Do you believe it's there? Yeah. Do you believe in a, a, an individual person that lives in that place right now yeah. is coming down here in the clouds and snatching you out of here? Yeah. Oh, you people are crazy. How could you believe that? Yeah. It's spiritual. So you're believing in all that virtual stuff? They had a guy in, I think it was Singapore. I need to look the article back up when I was doing the research. And I had a guy in uh, Singapore. He put on an entire thing, walked down the aisle, talked to people and so on and so forth. He got up when he got done and he took out his handkerchief. You know, he pulled his glasses off. He took out his handkerchief and he cleaned his glasses like that. And then right in front of him, just disappeared, just like that. And so they <clears throat> went up there and waited a few minutes. People were aghast. You know, what in the world happened to them? Is it a magician? You know, some kind of smoke and mirrors kind of deal and that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, the guy comes walking out from behind the curtain right there. And they said, uh, he said, you have been uh, being instructed by a hologram for the past hour. And nobody even knew it because mm. wow. the technology was so good. Wow. Images, images, images. You watch it and watch it and watch it and watch it, and the next thing you know, you get to where you fall into it. Right. Some of you, they got this going on now where you have a, 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 a guy filed a deal, I guess because of that movie thing that came out, where he wanted permission to marry his computer. Now, see, you're laughing. You mark this old preacher's words, in less than two or three years, you will have people that are having relationships and consider their significant other to be their electronic device. Some of you are married to them now anyway. Amen. I just don't Amen. know what will happen if you divorce them. <laughs> do they get half or what do they get? <laughs> you say, what did he do? He created a woman yes, sir. out of the computer to be everything he thought it should be. I hate to tell you this, but when God made my wife, he made my wife to help me to be what I'm supposed to be, not to just be what I think she should be. You say, why? Sometimes there's a little sandpaper in there. Sometimes the Lord uses her to knock edges off of me. Other people can't. He's good for me. Sometimes I have to consider things. You say, what? I'm married to her. I've got to live with her, and I ain't sleeping on the couch. Amen. Sometimes you've got to listen to them. Sometimes they're right, at least 50% of the time. The Bible's right. You fellows, you always say, well, you know, the woman, you know, he got in trouble for listening to Sarah. Yeah, he did. Both times. Which time are you referring to? 
One time, if he'd listened to him, he'd stay out of trouble. And the other time, he listened to her and got in trouble. He said, well, what's the truth of that then, preacher? You better be walking with God to know if she's misleading you or not. All through the Bible, there are some women that misled their husbands. But it's a husband's fault for not being close enough to God to know when that woman's being led by her emotions. A woman gets all messed up with her emotions or anger, and if her hormones are messed up or something like that, she's all whacked out. You've got to know, okay, thank you, honey, I appreciate it. But, the, but, but here's what the Bible said, and this is what we're going to do. She'll come back to you later on and say, I'm glad you didn't do what I thought we should do. I was in a moment of meltdown there. Amen. But, but, but sometimes she comes to you and you're so stinking stubborn and you're just so unsecure, insecure, you won't listen to her. Right. Amen. Sometimes she'll save your cotton picking hide if you'll listen yeah. to her. Amen. Good woman, hard to find. Amen. Farce prime brother rubies. Well, it's getting late now. I'm going to come back to your Bible, if you will, please. You keep messing around with that stuff. I'm going to keep preaching on it because I can tell it bothers you. So I'm going to do my research, you know. Well, find that in the Bible. You really want me to give you some verses on that? Whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all to the glory of God. Amen. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What goes in your eye affects your heart. Shall I continue? That's just off the top of my head. I got scripture for it. Give me scripture for condoning it. You can't do it. Give me scripture for condoning gossip. Well, that's what that thing turns into. Well, preacher, you use email and stuff like that, and, and so on. I do. I'm trying to figure a way to get out of it. I'd like to disconnect. Did you just hear that? Oh, God, is he going to make us put our computer on the altar? <laughs> really? Think about it a minute. You can't, you, you can't be quiet for five minutes. You get up in the morning, and before you get your coffee, you grab your phone. That's right. That's right. Amen. What happened? We talked to the kids about it. I've watched the kids, man. They get ready to go. They take their phone to bed and put it under their pillow. It yeah. goes off during the night, and... That's why they're not sleeping, walking around like zombies all the time. Three o'clock in the morning. It has no, it, it has no, no emotion. It, it runs all the time. It doesn't breathe. It doesn't think. It doesn't do it. It just runs all the time. It's electronic. It just runs. It's never in, it never runs out of energy. It's not human at all, but you treat it like it is. You, you know, what happens if I drop it and it gets wet? Oh, just dry it off. <laughs> That's some dangerous stuff you're fooling around with. Amen. Somehow you got your eyes, you're madder than a hornet right now. Well, it just shows who your God is. You get your God kicked, you get mad about it. Anything that trumps him, you shouldn't be upset about it. Amen. Psalm 119, come back, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, not 119, come to Romans chapter number 1. Get back to some of this New King James stuff. Slick stuff, it ain't always right in your face. You're a preacher, you're pretty narrow-minded. Thank you. Appreciate that. And there's not much room in there for brains. Thank you. Appreciate that. Knowledge puffeth up. Charity edifies. Romans chapter number one. Here's one of the changes that all of them make. They do it in the NIV, the New American Standard, the RSV, the new RSV, the new RSV. If I gave you a, 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 a something, if I handed Brother Brad this marker and I said, Brother Brad, that's the best, the latest, the closest to the original languages as it can possibly be, there's no improvement, and I handed that to Brother Brad, and Brother Brad said, I got the best now. And then two years later, Brother Brad, I have a new revised version of that marker that's better than that. Mar well, I thought you said this is, as well, but we've revised it even better now. And we say, well, so that's going to be revised again. And yeah, a couple more years, we'll have the new new. Or we'll have a new English. You see, you just don't do any research into the people that write that garbage when they write that stuff in the dedicatory that I told you about, uh, that, where the old King James Bible had a dedicatory and told you things about it. Their dedicatory is, it's, it's, it is uh, what I call fig leaves. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it. Come on, please. It's, it's fig leaves. If you know anything about human nature, you see what they do to cover up their guilt. Amen. If you just take the time to read the preface, 
and see, well, now we realize that the King James Bible is the Word of God was accepted for years, the absolute standard in all matters of faith and practice, and it's the most wonderful translation and all that kind of stuff. And we think, you know, it held and it's done. More people have been saved through the King James. We think it's the most wonderful thing in the world. And it, but now we've come out with this new with fig leaves. Right. You feel guilty. And we're not trying to do anything and saying that the King James Bible is not the Word of God. We're trying to just show you that this is now closer than the King James because we now have more, new, better, this and that and the other. But we certainly by no means mean to have any disparaging remarks against the King James Bible because it's been the absolute standard for all of the years. See, we're nobody's enemy. We're everybody's friend. We're, we, we just want to help. That's all we're doing. No, you're not. You got caught in picking fig leaves on you're hiding something. Amen. Right. Somebody exposed you. That's what guilt will do to you. Yep. You'd be surprised what you do when you get guilty. You'd be surprised what you'll write to cover up your guilt. Right. Amen. That's what that is. That's why they changed that thing over there where they in this passage right here where they write change the truth, Romans 125, to exchanged. 125, who changed the truth of God into a lie. They fix it as exchange the truth of God for a lie. Whoa, big difference. They didn't exchange anything. When you go in to exchange something, you go to the store and I get a, maybe a large or something and I walk in and I say, I'd like to have this, but this large is too small for me. And they exchange it for the same product and a different size. There's a difference in change and exchange. Exchange is so, ni so much nicer. But the King James Bible says changed for a reason. To let you know they didn't exchange squat. They didn't give you something that's similar to the original product. Amen. That's right. They changed it. Amen. I walk in and want to change a, a black t-shirt and they're going to give me a pink tutu. Uh-uh. Or oh, we just want to exchange it for that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You didn't exchange. You changed it. I'm here for a t-shirt. I ain't wearing no tutu. Romans chapter number uh, five. Romans chapter five. Preacher, you're just too dogmatic about it. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm real dogmatic about it. You're messing with my faith. Amen. You're messing with my salvation. Amen. You're messing with truth. What would I have to preach if I didn't have truth? What would I have to preach? What would I get up here and tell you? Let's just sing the Barney song. I love you. You love me. We're some kind of purple family. With a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Now let's get Mr. Rogers in here to do that <laughs> with his little sweater on. What would you do in church if you didn't have right. truth? Amen. What would there be to preach? I'll tell you. You want me to tell you what's being preached now? Psychological slop. Right. Amen. Amen. Any of you have uh, psychology besides a doctor? Any of you have psychology uh, in college or school when you were growing up, coming up? Half a dozen of you. Your two standards there, at least when I was going to school, your two standards were Freud and Young. All Young was was a regurgitation of Freud. And that's all if you knew anything about Freud. Freud's a, got a, everything's got an oral complex. You know what he died of? Mouth cancer because he couldn't get the cigarettes, uh, the, the cigars down. He's talking about everybody's got an oral complex, an oral complex, an oral complex. is all connected to some kind of sex thing and this and that and the other. Oral, 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 oral. You need to look at this. Look at the id. Look at the ego. Look at the super ego and all that stuff. And people just bought into all that junk. It's like, well, we never heard that before. That guy must be really smart. He died of mouth cancer from sucking on cigars. And he's a cotton-picking idiot. Amen. But you know what happened? That becomes your standard. So guess what happens? You go to a psychologist. You go to a psychiatrist. That's where they were trained. They weren't trained in the Bible. They don't have the foundation. I'm not saying there may not be ones that know they have the right balance, but I'm saying that's their foundation. So guess what they do? They give you that. Then guess what that focuses on? Can I just tell you why they're all talking about the id, the ego, and the superego? Can I just tell you what it winds up focusing on? You. Psychology is the study of self. That's why you like it. That's why they preach it. Because it's like, I'm helping you, and isn't this what, doesn't this make you feel good? And let's be a better person. This will make you a better you. That's psychology. You ain't got a verse in the Bible that says that. That's contrary to that. You know what the Bible says? You're the problem. You say, why? Because of this. Amen. 
So the Bible's negative. That's why they don't want to preach it. You come to church and you feel bad about yourself. Good, we had a good service today. Amen. Amen. Really? We had a service there one night and a lot of kids came to the altar and so on and so forth. And the lady said, man, that seemed awfully hard and harsh. And I said, good, that's what we want. Amen. You say, why? They get enough pumping, and prodding and plodding all along the way and bleeding right. and all that kind of stuff. They need to feel bad about themselves every Amen. now and then. Amen. It's called guilty. It's called conscience. Good, you still got one. Right. You know, if you're walking in the flesh, it'll bother you. Amen. Some of your stomachs are bubbling a little bit. Right. Your conscience is bothered. Good. It should. If you're walking in the flesh, your flesh ain't going to This is spiritual stuff. Amen. The spirit is contrary to the flesh, and the two cannot live and d- d- dwell without having an argument. Amen. Galatians 5. Yeah. They don't tell you that. Everybody's supposed to be in harmony. Baloney. That guy's my enemy. Amen. 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 That's my number one enemy. Amen. Oh, it's too late. I need to stop now. But, I, I, but, but listen to me, folks. You've got to get the right perspective on that stuff. Yes, so that's why if you listen, if you know anything about that, and I'm not recommending you study it, but if you know anything about that and you hear these modern uh, uh, motivational speakers and modern preachers, the preachers and the motivational speakers, you can't yeah, determine right. much difference right. in them nowadays. Right. They motivate you to buy a building, motivate you to buy this, motivate you to do this, and motivate, 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 motivate. At any rate... If you listen to it for very long at all, you know what you'll find out? You'll find out those individuals are giving you psychology. They're not preaching the Bible to you. And when you preach the Bible, you know what you do? You lose people. I didn't come to a church to get told I was wrong. Okay? Go to the other church and get to the judgment seat of Christ and let him tell you what's wrong. I don't like to see him go. Amen. But I don't want to see the truth go. Amen. So if you preach the truth, you're going. It, it's my job to expose you to it, and if you reject it, then that's between you and him. Right. All right, we'll take a short break there.